Have you ever set up what you knew was gonna be the perfect photograph, the lighting was right, the angle was right, the timing was there, and just one little thing threw everything off and ruined the shot? Yeah, me neither. Hey everybody, welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of all of our episodes of Large Format Friday. We're in the double digits now. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday there's gonna be a new upload with some different topic about large format photography. Today's video isn't exactly a new one to the channel, more like a 2020 update. Nearly a decade ago, I took my old Android 2 smartphone and shot this really shaky video uh, in an attempt to help other large format photographers escape the same fate I had multiple times. The culprit? Bellows extension factor. The cause? The inverse square law. So when doing research for this topic, it turns out photographers get very personal about how they arrive at Bellows Extension Factor. It's almost like talking about making the perfect cup of coffee. We all have our own experience, tastes, and preferences. This is the technique that I've been using for years, works for me, and I'm also gonna share a few other ways I've discovered that get you the same answer. So go ahead and try them all and see which one fits for you. You may have already had some run-ins with the inverse square law when taking an off-camera flash class or just thumbing through a photography textbook. If you haven't, the inverse square law states that the intensity of a light source as it radiates from that source is inversely proportional to the square of the distance traveled. To put it simply, the further that light travels from its source, the less intense it's going to be because it's going to spread out further, and that drop-off is pretty much exponential by the time you get far, uh, far enough away from that source. You can imagine that a camera that has one of these little accordion-style bellows uh, can also succumb to that. So let's say I'm going to take a landscape photograph and I take my big wide angle lens out, my 150 millimeter, and I want to photograph a subject that's uh, maybe about a dozen meters in the distance. It's really far out there. To get that subject in sharp focus, I'm really only going to need about the same amount of bellows as the focal length of the lens. So my 150 millimeter lens will only need about 150 millimeters of bellows. But let's say in that same scene, I want to frame up something really close to the camera and I have to rack out that bellows way, way, way close. Think of it like pulling a magnifying glass away from your eye. Your eye looks normal size when it's really close to your eye and you pull it further away and you get that magnification effect and your eye gets all big and goofy and funny, right? Same thing's gonna happen when I pull that bellows uh, further out from the camera, I pull that lens closer to the subject matter, I'm gonna get increased magnification and more emphasis on that subject and less emphasis on the background as a result. Knowing what we now know about the inverse square law, if I were to let the same amount of light, one traveling 150 millimeters worth of bellows and another 300 millimeters worth of bellows through the same lens, I would have two different exposures. The one traveling at the focal length of the lens is gonna arrive quicker, brighter, and at the right intensity that I meter out. But the one that has to travel that further distance, that light is spreading out and it's losing in intensity. And in order to save that exposure, I'm going to have to compensate for my bellows extension factor. The following 30 seconds or so contains math. You've been warned. So to find our bellows extension factor, we need to take the total extension of the lens, divide that by the focal length of the lens, take that number and square it. So in this case, I have 300 millimeters of bellows, divide that by the infinity focal length, which is 150 millimeters, that gives me a nice round number of two. I square that, that's four. So our bellows extension factor is four, meaning we're gonna need to somehow let in four times as much light to our camera to get the same exposure when I'm photographing at infinity focus versus really, really, really close. So once we know our bellows extension factor, we can start relying on those variables we know and love from photography, our aperture and our shutter speed. If you like to use aperture, take that bellows extension factor, log base two of that number, and that's gonna give you how many f-stops to compensate with. You'll have to open up by that many f-stops, or you can take that bellows extension factor and multiply that by the effective shutter speed uh, that you've got, and that will give you your, uh, your new reading. I don't really consider ISO an option because Bellows Extension Factor, once you get used to it, it's just, it's another thing you do. There's already so many things you're doing. What's one more, right? If you choose to use ISO, you're now intentionally pushing and pulling your film. And I don't know about you, but the cost of sheet film, it has me not wanting to experiment as much with push and pull, unless I really know I can get away with it for certain scenes. So I mentioned at the top of the video that there's a lot of different ways to arrive at Bellows Extension Factor, and I want to go into those a little bit more. 
Some photographers like to take the focal length measurements, both the focal length of the lens and the bellows extension, and like to think of those in terms of f-stops. So in the case of the example I gave, um, my 150 millimeter lens would be f15, f16, and the bellows draw I would have would be f30 or f32, the closest thing. And if we know how to count an f-stops, 16 to 32, that's two stops, and that's a really quick way to arrive at that. Another cool little method I found when I was doing research for this video is this thing called the Quick Disc by Philip Salzgiver. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Philip. I'm going to put a link below uh, to where you can download the one-page instructions and little cutout for it. It's this, uh, this little chip that you placed in the scene and then another little chip that you would measure on the ground glass. Basically, you would find that chip in your scene, put the target right next to it and measure it. And based on the difference in size and magnification, you would be able to say, okay, I need this much bellows factor based on magnification. It's free, just download it, print it and use it. If you lose it, it prints another one. It's pretty great. Okay, so before we go, there is one other way that photographers would use to calculate bellows extension factor. And I think it's a little, uh, hmm, how do I put it? It's a little outrageous. You could actually do what modern digital cameras do, which is metering at the focal plane. So there were a few select companies. Uh, Cinar was probably one of the more popular ones and not just because I'm a Cinar fanboy, but they had this thing called the Cinar Booster. They had a probe that would insert into the back of the film camera, either directly through a special metering back or a metering cassette, a modified film holder, that would allow you to place this little spot meter on the focal plane and kind of measure various little readings. Overkill, yes. Effective, very. If you're shooting negative films, when in doubt, blow it out. Give it a little bit extra exposure, that's gonna be fine. But if you're shooting things that are really, really critical for exposure, like slide films, paper negatives, wet plate, other in-camera alternative processes, those usually have a smaller dynamic range and in doing so, you need to be a lot tighter with your exposure. So that little bit, that stop, that stop and a half, that could mean the difference between a really killer shot and one that's just, meh, it's a little dark, doesn't look good. The last thing I want to happen is you guys to watch this, go home and, and say, ah, I don't need this. You need to consider bellows factor. If you're doing a lot of up close work, you're shooting portraits, it should be in the back of your mind, okay, what's my bellows factor? And just make it another part of doing the dance with your camera. Bellows extension factor is just one of many things uh, that can go wrong in a large formatted exposure. And if you're new to large format, don't lose hope. Don't get bummed out. This happens uh, to all photographers working with large format. What picture did you have that totally didn't come out because of Bellows extension factor? I want to know down below in the comments. And if you have any questions about this, drop those down below too. The chat so far has been really positive. Let's keep that going, guys. And we'll see you next time for more Large Format Friday.